All right, so we're back. So that was it, basically getting your uh, HTML5 games going, then moving them over to uh, Windows 8, creating actual apps out of it, um, and, and really just being able to take something that you already have or you've already created uh, for the web, but now bringing it over into Windows 8, which, of course, the beauty of it when you do something like that is that you can now package that up as an application, ship it up into the Windows Store, put it into your developer movement, and boom, now we have points. So there you go. OK, let's, uh, let's make this live, eh? Let's make this uh, Q&A and interactive. So there's a whole bunch of you guys still on uh, the chat. So actually, thank you very much for still uh, sticking with us. Before I forget, since I'm notorious for forgetting, right above the player, you have that eval link. If you don't mind, um, make sure you fill that out before you uh, leave us today um, so that we have that eval um, and your comments uh, from today's session. OK, so let's uh, see what we have on here. Uh, gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for everything uh, today. Patrick, John, much appreciated for actually going through all of this content with us, answering all the questions, going through all the code. Uh, even some of it was ad hoc, which was great. Uh, so so much for that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, uh, no worries. That's the beauty of the doing a live event, right? And, like, uh, it's been a while since we worked on Yeti Bowl, but it was definitely one of our favorite projects at TAG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely good to just let people know our knowledge and share it with the world. So. But. Cool. And, and so actually, the question I have for you guys um, before I go to the questions in the chat is when you think about it from a developer's perspective, um, other than obviously uh, putting another application into developer movement and getting points, so on and so forth. Um, if I think about taking an HTML5 game, what is the motivation for moving it over to Windows 8, other than obviously the cool features? But if I'm considering it, like what should be that moving um, factor for me or that moving decision that I should be like, yeah, I'm going to take my HTML5 game and move it over to Windows 8? I think. Um the fact that you can get it to run on tablets and um, through like phones as well through uh, the web view um, opens up a whole like birth of devices and it also means that you have access to the Windows Store so you have a different distribution channel um, and your app can live on someone's device rather than have them access it through the web so those are all s strong reasons to migrate your app to Windows 8 Right, and as we were talking, the cost to migrate isn't terribly high because a Windows 8 HTML5 app is essentially running almost like a browser. It just adds a bunch of stuff you can use to extend your app. And a nice feature is like Patrick saying, like, if you want to sell your app, it's very easy to do. So it's a lot of stuff built for you uh, on the Windows 8 platform already. So. Well, and, and I think what was really cool too, and, and someone actually mentioned it in the chat, um, was that. It, it, it was actually relatively no change in code to move from one over to the other. So, I mean, I think about it, and, and you know, maybe this is just me because, hey, I go around wearing this shirt, right? Um, so maybe it's just me, and I'm thinking, why wouldn't you, right? And, and maybe it's as simple as, why not? But I find when we talk to developers, it kind of needs a little bit more of a push to say, hey, yeah, you know what? There are actual real benefits. Um, hey, Tom, thanks uh, for the comment on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so I actually did want to make uh, a point about uh, what we were talking about with Windows Phone 8 um, and HTML5. Um, so it is actually possible. And there's actually brand new templates uh, that they've added into Visual Studio 2012 to help you actually bring over uh, HTML5-based apps into Windows Phone 8 now. So that's actually kind of really cool. And uh, join us for the phone camp on March 28th, where actually some of the sessions are actually going to be showing you exactly how to do that. So um, it is possible. There are a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, and in fact, one of the advantages now of Windows Phone 8 having IE 10 on it is that you have that full HTML5 compliance. So, um, so there you go. What do I have on here in the chat? Can we uh, the volume be increased? Tony, do you mind pushing us up a bit? By the way, everyone, you can't see him because he's in here in the studio with me. But Tony is awesome in making sure that we look good, we sound good. So uh, we'll we'll see if we can get that volume uh, pumped up for you. Okay, what else uh, do we have on here? Folks, by the way, let's uh, put the questions in there, eh? Uh, okay, how about 
from a complexity of a game perspective, right? So obviously Yeti Bowl um, is cool and, and it's not, if you, you think about that and you contrast it to, let's say, um, something else that's HTML5 heavy, like cut the rope or something like that, do you find that there's um, limitations of from HTML5 in the browser to HTML5 native on Windows 8, or is it better, or is it faster? I mean, essentially, an HTML5 app in Windows 8 is just running an IE, IE 10 engine in the background. So if it run, it'll pretty much run probably a little bit better because you're taking up the entire screen and you don't have the browser Chrome. But it'll run essentially the same as IE 10. So if your game runs in there, it's going to run in the Windows 8 App Store as well, if not better. Um, and like full functionality with touch and everything like that? Yeah. like. Pretty much everything I've seen, if it's in IE10, it's in the Windows 8 App Store apps. Cool. So. Um, there was actually a question very early on in the chat with regards to, um, hey, you know, HTML5, or you were showing the HTML5, and then there was comment here about, hey, this looks a lot like it's a lot of JavaScript. Um, mm -hmm. Can you do HTML5 with C Sharp? I mean, the languages look very similar. So if you're coming from yeah. a background like um, uh, XNA, mm -hmm. um, the code will look very familiar. And if anything, it'll be easier to code in JavaScript than C Sharp because it's a much more flexible right. language. You don't have to worry about um, type specifications mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I don't believe there's a way you can just straight use C Sharp with an HTML page. Um, I believe the way they like to structure that in a Windows 8 app is XAML with the C Sharp. So right, right. I've actually seen um, some people like on the on the web, right? Obviously, <laughs> use HTML5 from a visualization perspective within ASP.NET pages. But again, that's for the web. It's not mm -hmm. going to work on the Windows 8 side because you're right. It is in fact um, XAML C Sharp or HTML5 in JavaScript. It's not mix and match. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much the structure they've laid out for you. Of course, you could do like a C sharp with a web view, you pulling any HTML5 and crazy stuff like that. But I don't know if I'd suggest that per se, unless you're doing something really crazy. But mm -hmm. oh, there was a comment. I, I love that. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Tommy puts in the chat, if you're interested in building Windows 8 games using HTML5 or Unity 3D, make sure to follow Tommy Lee on Twitter. And if Tommy was actually in the studio here with us, he'd be like, yeah, that's Tommy Lee, but not the Tommy Lee that you're thinking about. Um, Casey says, I want to use voice tech in my app. What is the ease of use with that in HTML5? Um, so not necessarily in HTML5, definitely in the the Windows 8 app, there should be, like, in the last section, I was walking through a lot of the, the Windows APIs um, to get, like, contacts. There should be stuff to, like, pull the microphone the same way. So as long as you're using a Windows 8 app, not necessarily, like, IE 10 or anything, you should be able to pull into some OS-specific Windows API there and grab the, the microphone stream right in the app. I know it's I, fairly actually, built in. Actually, sorry, for you. I, I was just going to add in there. Um, that reminds me, wh one of the things that a lot of um, people kind of forget when they're starting to think about HTML5, JavaScript, and all that kind of stuff, even though it's JavaScript, in the Windows 8 world or in the Windows Store apps world, you still have access to all of the um, APIs of the actual OS through the WinJS library, right? So don't think that just because it's HTML5 JavaScript, which you're used to technically running in a browser, when you bring that over, it, um, you know, like John said, it's not running in a browser. So you still have access to all those APIs the same way that you would have from uh, C Sharp. Right, correct. Yeah, they're just slightly different calls, so, but it's almost a pretty close to identical APIs you're going to be using between C-sharp and JavaScript provide it for you, so. Um, what about making uh, 3D game or 3D style games? In HTML5, uh, uh, the performance, I think, is um, just not going to be, a, like, because um, 3D in HTML5 is done through WebGL. Right? Yeah, traditionally that's the path people have been going. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would say if you're going for a 3D game, unless you're going really weird 
tricks with like how like the old Super NES games did 3D, um, I'd probably try to steer towards more C Sharp XAML because um, they give you more access to the graphics rendering. Um, and right, WebGL is really cool, but it's not supported in the Windows 8 world. So yeah, and nor is it supported in Internet Explorer. So yeah, you know. Um, now here's something for me because I am that. C or uh, the XAML C sharp kind of guy. If I were to switch over to this world, um, you know the HTML5 JavaScript world, what's that learning curve like? Like where do I where do I start in actually getting into this world? Is it more learning the HTML5 and make something work for a web browser, then move it to Windows 8, or um, just forget about the web browser and do Windows 8 first and then bring that into the browser? I think definitely like starting with building web pages is a, like, a really good place because you get an idea of all of the different um, options out there for you. Like um, building out DOMs uh, so that you can like structure a web page, like the styling. Um, although uh, for Visual Studio, one of the great things about it, the Web Express version, uh, you can build a web page in it and publish it like from the IDE. So it really makes the workflow nice and simple. Yeah, and I'd say between C Sharp XAML and HTML5 JavaScript, a lot of the architecture patterns are going to be similar. So you're going to have, instead of your HTML5 page, you're going to have your XAML page. And they're both just like the view. And then to do all your logic behind, so your .cs file, you just replace that with your .javascript file or .js file. So it's really like, it shouldn't be a steep learning curve if you're proficient in one to the other. So. Oh yeah, and definitely if, if you're used to XAML, like HTML, the markup is almost identical. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. It's probably a little more, it can get you in trouble, but it's probably a little more free to like, like change stuff. Like XAML is a little more like strictly typed and stuff, so. Cool. And, and actually, since we're talking about this and you guys were talking about Visual Studio, one of the biggest, biggest sort of, um, i trying to think, uh, thoughts about Visual Studio is like Visual Studio and Web Editor like totally like this, like n having nothing to do with each other. So there's been several um, enhancements, upgrades, so on and so forth for Visual Studio to be able to do really cool web stuff. Um, HTML5 stuff in Visual Studio. How do you find that experience? Do you find that you have the necessary tooling and Visual Studio is pretty much the only thing that you need to use? Or um, there's still a little bit of something else that you need in order to, uh, to do your games and then especially when you move it over uh, to Windows 8? The profiler. Yeah, I'm, I, I pretty much never leave, leave Visual Studio now with Windows 8. JavaScript HTML5 apps. Um, 2012, they've added a pretty good JavaScript editor, so you get like your IntelliSense a lot, which is obviously an awesome feature. Um, there's a really great profiler in there now. Um, so since we're working with game apps, like obviously that's very important um, for performance reasons. Um, and then the most recent thing that they had even added like the memory profiler, so you get to see like all the the memory you're consuming and which objects are created. So Pretty much, I found like at this point, it's really equivalent to Chrome in like all the developer tools they offer you. So, which is pretty much the standard in the web development field right now. So, well, you guys heard it from them, right? They're uh, even though they're on uh, this webcast and they were talking about cool Microsoft things, they are not Microsoft people. So, um, you know, if I were to say, you guys were like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever, you're a Microsoft guy. But these guys are using it. Um, you know, obviously, you sound happy. So, uh, give it a try. Let's see what else we have here uh, in the chat. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, believe it or not, I think we fielded all the questions. Okay, well, how about this? Um, it is a good time to uh, let you go home. Um, so <laughs> let's do this. We're going to keep the chat open for a little bit longer. Um, both John and Patrick are on the chat. If you 
happen to think of something uh, when we're off the air, by all means, post it in there. They'll have uh, the answers for you. Um, in the meantime, we'll sign off here from the studio. Again, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Um, really great content. Um, and it looks like from the, uh, from the comments in the chat, there was really good uh, content from the audience as well. So thanks so much for that. Now, for you guys still watching, remember, I'm going to ask again. I know you heard it a billion times. Evals, please. Just make sure that you uh, fill that in before you leave us. Um, and with that, we'll see you again on Monday if you're joining us for the web camp. Um, same time. I was going to say same bat channel. I don't know if I'm allowed saying that. Um, but I said it, so there you go. Uh, anyway. We'll be back here again 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of web stuff, both in terms of the tooling, but also how that can then apply back into um, Windows 8, Windows Store apps, uh, and so on and so forth. So until then, or uh, until then, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining the gentleman. It's great to have you. We'll see you on Monday.